Hey YouTube, Wes here checking in with my vinyl finds for the month of April 2020. Hope you're all doing well, uh, staying as safe and as healthy as you possibly can in these crazy times we're living in. Um, hold on, just a minute. All right, let's get into it. My vinyl find for the month of April, 2020. Okay, these first two pickups I have to share with you today are a couple of pickups from my local record store here in town, the last record, the last record store standing here in town. Uh, they were doing curbside pickup for most of the month, and then they, the city told them they couldn't do curbside pickup again, and then thing, they allowed businesses to start opening up again, so they were only blocked from doing curbside pickup for about a week. Um, so they're back to being able to do curbside pickup. They could potentially let people into the store, but uh, for safety reasons, they're, they're trying to uh, limit that, so they're still doing just curbside pickup uh, for now. Um, but yeah, I wanted to support them, so I ordered a couple things. One of the things I knew they had that I've been wanting to get for a while now, just you know, push, keep, kept pushing the ball back on that one, kept pushing, the, pushing things back on it. Um, this was something I had on cassette forever, and then about ten years ago, when I moved out of my uh, apartment. I got rid of all my cassettes at one point, so there were albums I had on cassette that I just lost, and this was one of them. Uh, just for some reason, never had it on CD, uh, and that is Public Enemies, Apocalypse '91, uh, The Enemy Strikes uh, Black. Uh, so yeah, I know this has been in the bin at the record store for a while now. It's one I wanted to get uh, back into my collection in some sort of format, and of course preferred format is vinyl, so I went ahead and uh, did a curbside pickup on this one. Very nice gatefold on this, and one of the nice things about this, this is a reissue, this is not an original. It's two LP set, uh, pressed on a nice translucent green vinyl. Um, RTI pressing, sounds great. Uh, yeah, really, really nice on this one. I'm really impressed with it. I need to get printed sleeves here, printed inner sleeves. The second LP is on green vinyl as well. Uh, and you do get lyrics, which is nice. A little bit of liner notes. Uh, so yeah, the Public Enemy, Apocalypse 91, Enemy Strikes Black. Uh, added to my collection in April. All right, and the next thing I picked up from uh, Here Again Records, this was a new release in the month. Well, it's always fun to get new releases, and I miss going into the record store on Friday and, and grabbing a new release. Uh, but I did see that this one was coming out, streamed it on Spotify in the morning time, and uh, went ahead and uh, put it in order for a curbside pickup and did it, I guess it was Friday evening, I picked it up. So I was able to get this on release day. Uh, but this is a new album by Purity Ring titled Womb. Uh, so this is their, I believe their third third album. I have the first two on vinyl. Really, really love this group. It's it's a it's a a very dreamy electronic uh, female vocal kind of group. Really, really nice, pleasant, fun kind of stuff. Just my my kind of thing. I, I love the electronic female vocal kind of groups like this. And I was glad to be able to pick this up. And I believe this is a, uh, a an indie record store exclusive on a nice red vinyl, one LP. Uh, so yeah, that's the new album by Purity Ring titled Womb. Uh, that was a new release for the month and glad I got to pick that up on release day. All right, next thing, we'll go ahead and talk about the Vinyl Me Please release for the month. Uh, of course, their essential release of the month that I do. I do the essential uh, thing, and this is the John Cale mix of the debut Stooges album. I said in a contest, I believe it was Brad's contest, how I didn't have any uh, 
Iggy Pop or the Stooges or anything in my collection. And then soon after that contest video went up, they finally please announced that this was going to be their essential album of the month. So that was pretty cool how that how that worked. And, and this was really my first time giving sort of a deep listen into a Stooges album or anything associated with it. Um, so yeah, I don't know the original mix of this album. It's it's kind of weird. It's gonna be it's gonna be weird to hear an original mix of this album if I ever do, because you know most people will have will have known that that mix for, uh, for a long time. This might be something different for them, and this is my introduction, my first experience. So that's gonna be the weird one to me. Uh, uh, but yeah, really really good sort of garagey punky angsty kind of stuff uh, yeah definitely definitely dug spinning this i've been spinning this uh several i spun this uh, album several times uh, that's one of the nice things about working from home is i can put on records and have them going while i'm working for the most part sometimes i i need to really focus on what i'm doing and i gotta cut the music off because i don't do too well i get kind of distracted by having music on the background but yeah, I really enjoyed hearing this. Show the packaging here. Oh, there's a nice essay about it in here. And some more photography. Pretty cool. The print of the cover art. And then the album itself is on a sort of a blood, blood red, swirly kind of, of color here. A bit of what that looks like there. Pretty cool uh, effect there. Stooges debut, John Cale mix. Uh, 1969 was the original release of this, I think. Uh, really enjoyed getting this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work on trying to get some more uh, Stooges and Iggy Pop stuff in the collection because I do want to explore their music and learn about them, and I, I do I did appreciate this. All right, getting into a Discogs pickup. This next thing I have to share with you, as I said, was a Discogs pickup. It was originally a Record Store Day Black Friday release. Uh, this is something I got on CD for Christmas from my husband, but I really wanted to have it on vinyl uh, because I love this group and I'm trying to collect everything I can of theirs. Uh, and that is The Comet Is Coming. And this is, as I said, this was an EP they released for Record Store Day Black Friday. Uh, this is titled The Afterlife. These are like some bonus tracks that went along with their last full length or release. Trust in the life force of the deep mystery. <laughs> uh, once again on Impulse Records, really cool. Uh, three or uh, six tracks on here and some really good, uh, really good tracks. I really, uh, I've been digging listening to this digitally. And as I said, I wanted to have it on vinyl. Oh, that's a nice artwork on the inside there. Some liner notes and the LP itself on that wonderful Impulse label. And even though this is an EP, technically, it's uh, the tracks are pretty long. They're like six or seven minutes a piece usually. So it it's, it's almost like an, a full length album. It definitely definitely gives you some good value. And, uh, and I definitely say pick this up if you can. Uh, if you're into the group, I definitely recommend uh, trying to grab this. It was a uh, Found it on Discogs for like twelve dollars, so really good, really good deal. Um, yeah, I saw it in uh, I saw it in Sound Exchange in Tampa when we were there in January and passed on it at the time. And definitely glad to finally have this in the collection. As I said, I want to get all the all the Comet is coming stuff on vinyl I can. So that was one of my Discogs purchases for the month. Uh, next one was a Walmart pickup. This was one of my albums of the year for 2019, and I only had it on CD at the time and been wanting to get this on vinyl. It's pretty expensive on vinyl, and I did pay more than I wanted to, but it was a little bit less than it has been going for um, at Walmart, and that is Harry Styles' Fine Line album. His excellent, excellent uh, second solo album from 2019. Just a great, great album. Just awesome, awesome pop songs on here. And I definitely love this. Beautiful, glossy packaging on this one. One of the nice things about the vinyl release of this is it does come with a very large poster, which is really cool. I'll try to show this off here. Um, I think uh, uh, Tavis showed this as well. I think he got this album. One side of the poster. And then 
the other side of the poster here, sort of like that. That is a nice thing, a uh, nice bonus to have in the vinyl release since I said, as I said, this is very pretty expensive, uh, pretty expensive album. Uh, two LP set sounds really, really good on black vinyl. Pretty basic labels there. Harry Styles, fine line, a Walmart pickup for me for the month, and uh, glad to have this one in the collection since, as I said, it was one of my one of my favorite albums of 2019. All right, and this last stack of vinyl I have to share with you was a Discogs purchase. I uh, found a store that had an album I had been looking for on Discogs and just ended up going through all of their inventory. I think they had about 1,500 pieces and picked up uh, five, five albums from them and uh, got them shipped to me here. Uh, this first one was kind of a blind buy, uh, just caught my eye seemed interesting so I went ahead and picked it up and that is the debut album from the group Pulse Programming uh, self-titled I believe a yeah, very strange album art I think this is somebody's neck here and then I think this is somebody's wrist uh, very <laughs> very odd artwork on this one uh, Pulse Programming are an electronic group a bit of almost like a music concrete kind of style it can get kind of sort of clicky and glitchy and, and weird at times. Not real danceable electronic music, very much uh, more of a soundscape kind of thing. Yeah, I really dug this. I was This is definitely a find for me. I was glad I found this, glad I stumbled upon it. This is an original pressing from uh, 1999. Uh, I don't think this has been repressed. It's pressed on clear vinyl out of Chicago. So yeah, Pulse Programming, self-titled, really good stuff if you're into electronic, ambient, music concrete kind of stuff. Definitely check them out. Uh, next thing I got from that same seller, uh, this, is, uh, this is a very random pickup, so I don't know what they were thinking, <laughs> what they were uh, wondering when I, when I put placed this order because none of this seems to really go together. I got a French pressing of Melanie's Born to Be. I do like picking up Melanie stuff when I can. Uh, really nice there. Even though it's a French pressing, it is still on Buddha labels, or Buddha, the Buddha Records label. Very cool. I have not had the chance to spin this one yet. Um, it definitely needs a good cleaning. Uh, so Melanie's Born to Be was the second thing I picked up in that uh, order from Discogs. Next thing I picked up was an 80s album from the group uh, Renaissance. This is their album from 80, 81 titled Camera Camera. Uh, at this point they had left their, I forget what record label they were on. Um, was it Columbia they were on or Capitol? Um, but they moved over to the IRS records label. They had a change in the lineup of the members, uh, brought in a couple of members from a, uh, a new wave group. Uh, so this is kind of Renaissance Goes New Wave. Renaissance are, were a progressive band to start out with. Um, and this is sort of a mixture of progressive and new wave. It's it's going to take a while for me to really get into this. Uh, it has it had some good moments. It's it's going to take a little while. It's, it's not, you know, it's not a good place to start with Renaissance. Uh, but I, I just had to give this a try because I'd never seen it before, never heard it before. Uh, but yeah, Renaissance do a mixture of, of, of prog and new wave. Um, and that's on the IRS label, very standard silver and uh, magenta IRS label there. All right, this next one is a pickup related to my trip to Milwaukee in October last year. Uh, picked up that Archie Ohm Experience album while I was there, and I think he has only one other album, and it was happened to be in this store, and that's what got me started digging through their collection. Um, this is the Archie Ohm Experience album. Um, he plays a Yamaha synthesizer, does cover songs. It can sound kind of loungy, kind of cheesy, but I just wanted to grab this and hear it, so... It, you know, now that I have, I believe what I believe are both of his, uh, both of his full-length LPs, um, I can do that. So, yeah, this is just uh, Milwaukee 
uh, synthesizer player from the 70s and it has a custom label with Archie Elm experience on it. And the last pickup from that Discog store, the last pickup I have to share with you this month is, uh, I believe, an 80, 1982 release from uh, Paul Stuckey, uh, the Peter, Paul, and Mary. This is, uh, it goes by Noel Paul Stuckey. This is an album he did that was recorded in a church in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so it does have some religious themes on here, but just some really good really well performed really well played uh surprisingly well recorded this sounds amazing i was i was impressed at how good this sounds it sounds like you're right there in the church has a really good really good feel to it um yeah just some good some good old uh acoustic folk music small little group there um it's a good just some good uh Paul Stuckey stuff. Those are my pickups for the month of April 2020. Hope you're all doing well. As I said, hope you're staying safe as, as best as you can. Hope you're able to do some virtual digging like I have done or just some digging in your own personal collection, enjoying the music you have, the music you own. Um, be well, stay safe. Remember, there is no bad music, only music you don't like. And uh, I'll see you again real soon. Cheers.